Okay, welcome to today's practice. And this 45 minute practice is going to be a whole brain uh, class today. So whole brain is a little more of a, a subtle practice where we're using movement and breath to really start to find a little more, let's say, calm and ease in the system. But also it can be very nourishing and rejuvenating for the nervous system and really just to find more balance and harmony within the body and the brain, as it's called. Uh, the idea of being called whole brain is that we come into this kind of whole brain state where everything from either the left and right side of the brain or <clears throat> even the left and right side of the body is starting to communicate with a lot of flow and ease. And sometimes when we're more on one side, it becomes very linear or irritating or frustrating. This just helps to open it up so we can be a little more open, let's say. So we're actually going to start off in a reclined position, uh, kind of like Shavasana, I guess. And just coming down, using any props as you need to make sure you do feel somewhat grounded and comfortable. And then just starting off in stillness, allowing the weight of your body to rest into the floor. Noticing which parts of your body are in contact with the floor and your mat. You might like a few rounds of breath just sighing it out the mouth. And then starting to <clears throat> excuse me, find your natural breath rhythm. Changing it slightly so it becomes more of your conscious breath. So you are aware that you're inhaling and exhaling. Beautiful. And then just starting here, keeping the rhythm of your breath. So we're really looking to keep that smooth, full breath, but starting to invite movement into your feet. And so it could be up to you, but you kind of want two movements. So I'm going to flex the feet. So I'm turning my toes up towards the ceiling or towards my face as I inhale, and then exhale, point the toes. So the idea, especially in this type of practice, is to coordinate breath and movement. So one breath for one movement. In this sense, inhale, I draw back and I feel that whole movement through the body and exhale, then point the toes. Keeping the rest of your body kind of grounded and still, not really assisting in the movement, but you might start to notice how even with this slight movement of the ankle and the foot, you can feel that ripple all the way up your body. And the intention to really slow it down, start to notice that type of movement. So this practice becomes more like training from interoception and bringing ourselves into this beautiful healing state of noticing, observing. Continue that movement with your breath. It might be a little faster than what I'm going or a little slower. Taking what feels like three more to you. And then gently pausing with your feet, take a full round of breath. Can you notice any sensations within your feet, your toes, anywhere else in your body? And then we'll start the same thing with the hands. So again, your movement, we'll look for two movements. I'm going to open my hands up as I inhale, and as I exhale, curl my fingers in. So I'm making like little fists with the hands. 
Inhale to open. Exhale, curling it in. Stick three more like this. And then lift that sit on once again. Take a cycle of intention of breath as you bring your attention to your hands and maybe the sensation through your hands, your fingers, your wrists. And then when you really reach the arms up overhead, reaching out through your legs and you press through your toes and your fingers, take that full body stretch. Do I get a little new one? And then draw your knees towards your chest. Hands can rest just slightly on the knees, Sapasana. And then we'll start a little bit of movement here. So again, slow and subtle. If you're just here, letting your legs kind of rest where they actually go. And then the movement is just basically with the arms and the elbows. And so it might be that your knees come straight in towards you, or they come a little bit out to the side, just noticing um, where that goes in your body. But again, I'm going to inhale as I straighten my arms, roll the knees away. And then exhale, bend my elbows, gently drawing my knees in. Inhale out, and exhale. And then notice this light movement through your pelvis and your lower back. And really gently, so, so often we're moving really quickly into the body and into the hips. And with quite a big range of movement. And so one of the beauties of this practice is very slowly moving in and it becomes this very loving expression as we move into the body and just slowly so it has a very different effect on the nervous system even on the lymphatic system really everything in your body it's going to respond in a different way because the practice is so much more yin soft internal it comes to balance out other more yang based active full practice Taking three more like this. Oh. Once you've done what feels like your three, you might just pause here and check. You might like to bring the hands down or resting on the body. And then keeping your right knee in towards the centre, let's take that left knee back along the mat and interlace your hands around the right knee, little movement, taking circles. You might like circles of movement through the right ankle and spreading your toes, moving in one direction and then the other. And then starting to gently cross the midline. So as we walk towards this, not really walk, but as we move towards the spinal twist, adding in a little bit of movement. Again, noticing rotation is generally doing something we don't <laughs> maybe have as much as we think when it comes to where the rotation is coming from. So we're looking to get that nice movement happening from the thoracic spine, so from the middle part of your spine. And as you move slow, can you start to notice when we move slow, then we are able, I think, to cultivate this interoception, which means we can feel more what's going on in the body. And it's not just this kind of one big movement, but you can start to sense and feel more of the articulation, the smaller movements that are happening. 
So actually noticing which part of your spine is rotating and maybe which part of your spine doesn't want to do that. And you really begin to speak the language of your body and these little moments of yes and no. So if you prefer, you might come to a point where you want to hold still. Sometimes it can be really nice to keep the movement, like a, a, a gentle rocking. It does have quite a soothing effect, I think. <laughs> Taking one more breath here at the holding as you are, continuing that movement if you're moving. And then gently drawing back to center. Keep the right knee in towards the chest as you bring your left knee towards the chest. And just a moment with the legs like this. Pause. And coming to that breath, can you notice any differences between the left and right side of your body? What is there there to notice? Oh, and then gently extending your right leg long. This time your right hanging under the left knee. And we'll start off by taking little circles through your ankle, pulling out through your toes, little circles through the, the hip. Such beautiful practice to uh, spend time, right? Mindfully opening up our joint spaces. And just with little bits of movement, loving attention. And then again, Really in your own time, I've kind of taken my other arm until I get a cactus shape to try and keep that shoulder down. Just find a place where, again, you might start with a little bit of this rocking. So moving again, saying, oh, where am I rotating from? Where is the rotation in my body? What do I notice happening across the belly? What do I notice into the lower back or the glutes? What can you notice into your shoulders? And then you hold still in your twist and just breathing as you are. You're moving, but either way, there's still this conscious attention on the breath. And a practice like this can become more challenging because we're spending so much time to really focus on movement and breath. Coming out of the rest of the kind of madness of our day, bring our attention in to simplify the experience. Be here for about two more full breaths. And as you draw back through center, again mindfully picking up this right leg, draw the knee in. Even in front of the center. And just a moment of pause here, noticing. Let the body be heavy if you can. The breath remains smooth. Wonderful. And then we will be making our way up towards, let's say, child's pose as you start to move from the knees. So you can roll out to one side. You might like to just rock up and down your spine if it feels comfortable. And you can kind of maintain this awareness with your breath and movement. And if you like, the blanket or kind of having a little bit more softness for your knees here as we move. Then feel free to set that up so you are relatively comfortable where you'd like to move from. And we'll be in child's pose. Any little movement you could just be rocking your hips side to side to we'll arrive here. Beautiful. And then starting to come up towards your tabletop position. 
And so as you sit up in your tabletop, we'll find this movement first, just coming from um, child's pose to tabletop, but adding in a little cat cow action with the pelvis. So you can take that as deep as you'd like. So as I shift forward, I'll tilt the pelvis, lengthen. So I'm coming into more of this cow shape and then trying to lean, so shoulders over wrists. And that's really your option how far you'd like to take that. And then towards cat, round and dome. And as I start to push through my hands, push and pull the shoulder blades apart, I'm going to sink down that towards child's pose, just leaving the elbows. So with the inhale, we're forward and again, manage your breath as you'd like. Arch, cow pose, lengthen forward. Make sure you're not sort of jamming the neck. Try and keep length through the back of the neck. And then curl round. You may even like to tuck your toes as you sink back. Make a little kind of bonus toe squat here. Coming down. And forward. You're starting to move once again with your breath, creating a rhythm of movement. The awareness and fluidity so it has to feel smooth, yeah, easeful in a way. Even if there's a discomfort or you're not necessarily enjoying it, there is a sense of rhythm that starts to happen. That's what you're looking for, as opposed to good and bad. It's kind of a hard to explain but it's really being say honest uh, in your experience taking one more round like this And maybe you meet in your child's pose or in your tabletop. And then we will come forward onto the belly. So making your way down. Sitting up, you can release the feet. And then sitting up for a sphinx pose. So your version of sphinx, you might have your elbows out further in front. Anything that adjusts the level of spinal extension you'd like. So if you don't want as much back bend, bring your arms forward a little more and then lengthen through the crown of the head pressing through the tops of the feet pausing a moment in your breath one more full cycle of breath here And then coming down, we're going to take this variation and sort of moving locust pose. So if you haven't seen it before, you're welcome to watch this way. But as I come down, I'll show up first while you're putting your rest. So both hands on the lower back. And initially, I'm going to turn my head to one side. So for me, I turn it to the right, my right shoulder. Now, with the breath, I'm going to lift up. So bring my head back through neutral. And I'm taking my right arm forward as I lift my left leg. So opposite arm, opposite leg. Now, as I come down, I turn my head to the other side, indicating which arm I'll lift next. And then inhale, left arm, whoops, right leg. And coming back. So as you're ready, feel free to join in with me. Remember, you're turning your head and you're lifting opposite arm. As you lift your head, try and keep the gaze down a length through your neck. with your breath you don't have to lift the arm and leg that high you also could just lift one you don't have to lift the leg or take the arm out as far it's where you want to tune in and modify for your body Take one more to each side. Good. 
And then once you've done that, take a moment, you can bring your hands to your head, let your forehead come down, just pause and notice. Really take this intentional moment to pause, check in with the sensations of your breath. And then hands under the shoulders, make your way back for a moment of child's pose. And then we'll add on to this flowing movement. So ripple forward once again. Now, my high point this time, I like to take my hands a little further forward as we come into downward facing dog. If you would prefer just to take child's to tabletop, go for it. Otherwise, this time you tap the toes. You can have a nice bend in your knees for as long as you'd like. A little bend in your elbows, you might like to move in your down dog. And then ripple forward, really slowly bring those knees down. So find the control and integrity in your body as you move through these three shapes. I like to keep the toes tucked, add a little bit of <laughs> juice to the feet here, but up to you. And start to move through these three shapes, finding your rhythm with breath once again. Let's take maybe two or three more rounds, depending on the pace you're going. And then you're welcome to meet in a child's or you're being down dog if you'd like to meet there. So it's up to you. Beautiful. And then once you're there, wherever you've chosen to pause, you might just take a moment to breathe here. Or if you're in your down dog or your tabletop, you might like a little moment of movement, getting out those feet. If it's a down dog kind of day for you, just enjoying arriving here. If it's not a down dog kind of day for you, I so very much recommend staying in a child's pose. Taking two full breaths here. Either stillness or exploring and playing the movement. And then we'll gaze towards the feet and actually walk the hands back towards your feet, so towards a forward fold. And your feet make your hips and apart, but feel free to change it when really you feel really uh, stable and grounded here. And then you might like for this first one to bring your elbows up onto your knees and add a little more bend to the knees. And it can be quite a nice variation, especially when you're practicing more of a whole brain kind of thing, to do something slightly different, a little bit more kind of regressed and nourishing. So this is something that's out of the full end range. And it has different benefits on the body. It's always worthwhile remembering that, that it's not about always going to the, the furthest end range. And so this can be quite nice, the bending of the knees and then straightening. But explore if you feel like, oh, I need to come down further. Then you go for it. <laughs> it's, um, it's not right or wrong. It's more inviting, different exploration. And I only talk about this from very real experience of very much spending a lot of my early yoga life having to go to the end range of everything all the time. Beautiful. And then gently finding a way to press down through your feet. Look for some level of engagement as you start to curl all the way up. And maybe you reach those arms, lengthen, and hands come down. Beautiful. And then taking the time to really settle into your tadasana, or the standing, your standing kind of mountain shape, let's say, rolling the shoulders back, palms facing forward. 
You might like a moment to close down the eyes and enjoying the intentional grounding and arrival into your legs, into your feet by rocking forward and back. It's like you're <laughs> saying hello to your feet. You rock side to side. You do the circle. One direction and the other. And then finding what feels like your center or where you'd like to be today. And we'll take this into our moving mountain. So as you lift up on the breath again, really when we're working with the breath, we reach the arms up overhead. <laughs> Might even disappear. And then turn your palms down and exhale lower. It might be exhale, inhale down. You're trying to take it with your breath. So your arms might be moving a little faster or a little slower than mine, depending on your breath. But we'll start off with this movement of both arms at the same time. And then your next time up, one arm comes all the way up overhead and the other arm halfway. Right, reach, and then slowing it down. And again, then changing sides to make sure you remember which side went up. Other one halfway and lowering it down. And I didn't mention, but you might like to add it in from now, is as you come up, you can rise up onto your toes. Perfect, if the balance is there. Might feel nicer, sometimes it's nicer to kind of close down the eyes and just be a little more internal. Pretty hard to rise up to the toes and the eyes are closed, but have a go if you're doing that. Fun little challenge. Or you have ankles like me that crack every time you rise up onto your toes. So I'll stop doing that for the sake of the microphone. One more to each side. And then just taking about three more with both arms together once again. And right down. Beautiful. And soft knees, palms forward. Again, you can close down the eyes or just soften the gaze and observe the sensations or anything there is to notice in your body. Maybe even those moments of checking differences between the left and right side of your body. Beautiful. And then opening the eyes, give it a little ooh, shake up. Okay. And then we'll step, maybe I might want to step, uh, I'm not trying to say, wide on your mat. <laughs> and then let's turn the right toes out, your left toes out. So, like you're sitting up for your warrior two. And we'll start a little bit of movement in warrior two from here. Now, you're welcome to kind of choose where you want your hands. So, we're going to be moving the arms as well. And you might mind your hands coming to your heart center. You might prefer somewhere in the center or even down in your belly. You're just kind of choosing a point where you want to have your hands come in. If you don't want to take it to the body, you can actually just have your arms coming up and then out, up and then out. So very much up to you. I'm going to be working over there just into the heart center. So as you inhale, we reach the arms wide, bend into your front knee. And then with your breath, and come to the body or over here. And so starting to find this rhythm again, just really sinking in, sort of slowing it down, but adding a little more of the legs.
If you're bringing your hands to your body or even over here, let the arms either cross over or bring the opposite hand on top each time. So change which hands on top. Do two more like this. And then the next one will hold and that warrior two reaching out. Doesn't have to be your deepest variation, but if I say you can feel connection and grounding through both feet, reaching out through the arms. And then the lightness and a lift through the crown of the head by kind of squeezing everything back in towards the center. Beautiful. And then straightening that front leg, you bring your hands down onto your hips. Take a moment to turn your feet in. You might just come a little shorter. And then just this moment of pause, just one full breath. And what do you notice? Maybe in the arms or down the legs. Does it feel the same on either side? Full breath. And out. Wonderful. Take it to the other side. So turn your left foot out, right toes come in. Same thing, you might keep the hands on the same place as the body. You might change it this time or bring them up over here. Absolutely up to you. I'm going to move mine down more to the center of the body this time. Inhale, arms reach out. You can move your breath. And then exhale, coming in. And try and just gently focus your gaze. Really keep the intention internal and movement with breath. Two more like this, and then we'll hold in the warrior two. Holding as you're ready. Grounding down through those feet, standing out through your arms, and that lightness through the crown of the head. And then pressing down, hands come back. Once again, turn your feet, you might slightly shorten your stance. This moment of pause here. Always noticing the slight changes. Can you drop into the more subtle levels of your experience in your body? And then we'll take one more standing pose here. So we're moving into our forward, uh, right legged forward fold, but keeping the hands in connection with your legs. So you're kind of getting this proper sense of feedback as you're moving up and down. And if you don't really like keeping your hands in contact with your legs for whatever reason, you follow the hands just along the line of the body. So you kind of stay in this field of your body. Turning the toes in, you can keep as much feet in the knees as you'd like. And start up on the outside line. So here, this kind of inside of the body, sorry, the outside of the body. And then lifting up, lengthen with your breath, tilting the pelvis, coming down, get your hands traced down the legs. And then on your breath, as you're ready, press down through the feet, nice and controlled, noticing what areas of the body are required to bring you up and bring you down. As the hands stay connected to the body, we're just hovering off that line of the knees.
Let's take two or three more like this, and then we'll hold at the bottom. And the next time you come down, if you'd like to hold here, you might keep the hands just resting on your feet or bring them out in front or anything else you use. Just pausing. Rising halfway and slowly coming all the way back up. Shoulders back, you can step your feet in a little more. Maybe you give the legs a little shake. Find that pause again, palms facing forward. Option to close down the eyes and just notice your body, your breath, your connection through your feet to the earth. Nice full breath. And maybe you sigh out the mouth. Open up the eyes. Beautiful. So we're going to come back down onto the back. Now, if you do have a, um, a prop that you'd like to use for your waterfall pose in a moment, you can grab that. I've got a folded blanket up to you what you would like to use. Or again, you don't have to use props at all. But before we come in, we're actually going to take a few moments in our banana pose here on each side. So a little bit of gentle side body opening. So extending your legs out, we'll start off by walking the feet over towards the right side and off your mat a little if it's there, if you're mat, depending how it feels. You also might like to take your left ankle and cross it over your right, optional. And then you kind of lift and wriggle. So you're trying to turn yourself into this banana or crescent moon shape. Take the shoulders over to the right as well. And then option with your arms. I quite like them above the head. Taking opposite elbows or nearly a kind of actually reach all the way. Or anything else with your arms that feels more suitable. And we're here for about a minute on each side. And so as you come into this shape, sometimes it doesn't feel like much. And remembering that it's not always about having to have this huge deep stretch, right? It's coming into this healing and soothing space in your body. But with this shape, it's always interesting because the longer we're here, you tend to notice that your weight becomes heavier and you start to experience opening to the side body. So I think it's a really beautiful, gentle way to actually open into the side of the body. That left side is here. Seeing so if you can keep your attention on the, the smooth rhythm of your breath. So you might allow that focus to rest on your nostrils as the breath moves in and out. And see if you can make it so smooth that your nose hairs aren't even moving. Take three more breaths here. And as you feel, you get your third exhalation. Very gently, using your way back through center first. So, like you're coming into that kind of shavasana shape. And just pausing for a moment, noticing once again any of the different sensations between the left and right side of your body. Settle your breath. Mm. 
And then we'll take it to the left side when we're ready. So legs walking over towards the left. You can adjust your hips. Maybe you cross that right ankle. Maybe you wriggle your shoulders. And take the arms. And then just pausing here once again. Really taking the time to ground into your breath. And taking three more breaths here. And when you're ready, coming back through center. A moment of pause, like you're in that traditional version of Shavasana, to just notice each side. And then bending the knees. And just allowing a moment, again, kind of coming to this constructive rest, if I a little tilt forward and back with your pelvis, you shouldn't be lying and then putting the side body like that. So gentle rock with the pelvis. And then your option is we set up for supported bridge or waterfall pose. So if you have anything else, you prefer to take here by all means. Otherwise, if you're using your props and you're wriggling to the wall, slide that in and underneath. You kind of want it on the side. You've got a softer one. It's a little bit more story. And under the sacrum, watch the top of the buttocks here. And you can keep your feet down. You might like to reach the, the legs up towards the ceiling. You might even like to reach the arms up towards the ceiling. And then we'll just be here for a few cycles of breath. And you can enjoy a little bit of movement through the ankles, moving the hands. It can be quite a soothing and beautiful experience when you've got your legs up to just move and kind of watch your feet right, with this sort of curious nature of the real, I don't know, magical amazingness of your, of your hands and feet. I quite, quite enjoy it. And then feel free to stay here a little longer. Gently you make your way down. And you can either just stay there, go to Vasana, or you can swing your feet to the floor, or making your way through any last movements and then into your variation of Shavasana today. Again, that can be lying on your back. You might prefer to lie on your side. Use any props, or you might prefer to come up to a seated position and finish in a seat. They're very much up to you. Be here for just under a minute. You're bringing everything settled and just come right down before closing our practice.
Beautiful. And if you have more time, feel free to stay exactly as you are. Otherwise, if you're with me, inviting kind of awareness and breath back. And then wriggling into your fingers, your toes, stretching out through the arms, the legs. Option just to stay there, maybe rest your hands on heart center or coming on up to a seated position. Hands can be at heart center. Taking a full, full round of breaths together in through the nose. And sighing it out the mouth. Thank you all for joining me and sharing this practice today. Beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.